Welcome to the Fancy Comma YouTube. Today I am doing a YouTube on what it's like to work in Congress. I wanted to do this YouTube because I, I know that there are scientists out there that want to work in Congress and um, it can be different, it can be difficult for science to, scientists to get plugged into the policy process. So I'm just gonna do like a quick little spiel about working in Congress. So we have blogs on our website about how to work in Congress. As you may know, the US Congress has two different chambers. It has the House, which has a bunch of different people. It's based on the popul has different, di every state has different districts. Some states only have one district. The Washington DC has its own representative, Eleanor, currently Eleanor Holmes Norton, who doesn't vote. Um, the Senate has two people per state. So you can work in the House or the Senate. I worked in the House. The Senate's more competitive. Um, the house is, has, the house is very chaotic. But so in case you're wondering, you're a scientist, or maybe you're just some random person that stumbled upon this YouTube channel and is like, I want to learn about working in Congress. Um, here's a little bit about like literally what it's like to work in Congress every day. And I'm posting this because many people, I don't think people really know what it involves interning in Congress. So there's many ways you can work in Congress as a scientist but most scientists don't know about those ways. So one way is to become an intern. One way is to do those prestigious internships like the Science and Technology Policy Fellowships sponsored by AAAS, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. So um, there's a number of other ones. I noticed that a big AI people are hiring um, people to do, AI groups are hiring fellows right now because of the, the rise of, generative AI and the need to understand and possibly regulate social media algorithms. So that's that's another thing. Here's how I became an intern and what I did when I was an intern. So how I became an intern for in the house. For the house, it's called HVAPS, House Vacancy and Placement Service, maybe. I don't know what it's called for the Senate. You can read about it on the fancy comp one on my blog that we wrote about it. And there's also another really good resource that links to us, and I found it the other day. And it's really good. It's like a step by step of like how to work in Congress, how to work in committees versus individual members offices and so on. It's a really good resource. So I'll link it here also. Um, but yeah, so if you want to be an intern, you need to live in, for the most part, unless you want to work in a district office, you'll need to go to Washington, D.C. So you could do like a summer internship. Those are very competitive. I did a winter internship, but I wasn't a student. I had left graduate school by then. But it's uh, but you can apply like. Um, and so I, every week I applied to all the jobs and sometimes they don't even tell you whose job it is. It's like. Conservative Democrat seeks legislative assistant to cover natural resources and then so you just apply to that so i applied to tons and tons of those and just like republicans democrats so then i got some interviews and i got like i kept getting like a lot of interviews and honestly my life was such a blur at this point because i was also um i was just i had just left graduate school and i did i had left my phd program without my phd and i was kind of like not in the best of places. I was not in a great place. So um, so I was just like applying and I really wanted to work in Congress because I was like, I really want to work in Congress. It's my dream to work in Congress. So every day I applied, I had, call, I had different calls, I had different internships. And eventually I got an internship offer and it was from a conservative Republicans office in Arkansas. And they served on the natural, they did a lot of stuff with like forestry and natural resources. And I really wanted to work in their office and they were like a right wing Republican, but I, and I wanted to say yes, but I just didn't have any money. So I couldn't say yes to that one. So I was like, sorry, I would love to work here. Thank you for literally sending me this offer. Like I was like literally in disbelief that I could like work in Congress, but I was like, sorry, I can't, I don't have any money. I don't think I said that, but I didn't have any money. So I just was like, well, whatever. And then I kept applying anyway, cause I was like, maybe I'll have more money. And um, I did start freelancing. I was free. I was a freelancer. So I was like starting out in freelancing. When you start out in freelancing, you just do odd jobs for like very low amounts of money. And sometimes they're like way more effort than they're worth. But it's like, what are you going to do? Not have money and not be able to pay your bills because I had my student loan debt and stuff. So I, um, 
I just kept applying. And then I got another offer from another office and I interviewed and I got that one. And it started, it started in, it was like 20, I got that offer. I accepted. I, I packed all my belongings into my, into a rented car. I drove to Washington, DC, technically Bethesda, Maryland. I should have gotten a house with some people, but I didn't know anyone in Washington, DC. And it just felt, I just didn't, um, because I was like 30 something at that time, most of my friends, they had like families and stuff. So, um, so yeah, so I just went to this hotel. I was like, I guess I'll book a hotel. And then I ended up never getting a actual place to live because I did not have money for the down payment. But what you do when you work in a congressional office, the things that surprised me as a scientist going to Congress, the first thing was that there's a lot of emphasis on like the appearance of everything. So like, you know what the Congress Capitol Hill building looks like, right? It's like got a dome. It's got the person with the bird on their head. And I learned that appearances are everything in Congress. And like, we've all heard those like stories of members of Congress trying to like improve their appearances. Like there's that website that shows you like Wikipedia edits for every member of Congress's Wikipedia that come from in, inside of Congress. And so I didn't realize that was gonna be such a huge deal in Congress cause I, I went there. I mean, so I, I kind of like, I, I as a scientist, I kind of like to do my own thing at the intersection of many different disciplines, and I really liked fashion. So one of the things I did before I got my internship was go get a bunch of suits and stuff. So I had some Ann Taylor clothes. I went and got some Portofino shirts from Express, which are, by the way, perfect for congressional internships if you're female, because they're professional. I got them on sale, so they were, like, affordable. And you can wa- you can hand wash them. I hand washed them in my hotel room so I could save money on... Um, dry cleaning, which I end up never actually using dry cleaning in the 2.5 months that I lived in that hotel because, um, or maybe I did it like once or something. I don't remember. So you get to the Congress office in the morning, then you have to like straighten up the office. Like you have to put out the newspapers for the day. You have to make sure that the newspapers are in the correct order. You have to make sure that the people that are coming into the office, like you're nice to them because they're coming in there to meet their congressman. So um professionalism was like a really huge deal and honestly it's really hard to be professional sometimes when you're a broke af intern that doesn't know that's just like um luckily i found working in congress really rewarding so it wasn't like i showed up at congress every day angry but i definitely kind of was like barely making it like i would go to the i lived there was a grocery store right by the double tree in bethesda and I would go and get like seven cans of soup and then like get some like trail mix and then eat trail mix and soup. And then I get like a rotisserie chicken and some salad. And I only paid like $40 a week for my groceries. And then on Saturdays I would go get a delicious burger from BGR, um, turkey burger and sweet potato fries. It wasn't like I wasn't eating. And also the great thing is Congress is the things at Congress, all the events have like free food. So I would like take some cookies, take an extra cookie so I could have like cookies to eat over the weekend at my house. So, um, and like there was free coffee in my office, which I'm really grateful to the people that live in the district in which I worked because I wouldn't be able to do my work without my three daily coffees just in that office. In addition to the two coffees I drank on my way to the office. So, but in terms of the actual work itself, it was like, you get there, You do all the stuff where you like tidy up the office and like make everything look nice. And then your supervisor, which is like whoever needed stuff done, it was very like rapid paced. So like, it was like, hey, Shiva, we need you to go to this briefing on like, um, like I went to one briefing that was about biomedical research and it had a stage four cancer survivor, which stage four is the highest stage of cancer. So it's like literally incredible that there was a cancer survivor for stage four, but it was like, you have to get, you just have to like haul, you know what, to the, to the memo, to the briefing, sit there while they talk, take notes. Then immediately after that, you have to go and write a 
one page summary basically of like, what are the people talking about? What's the policy ask? Why is it important? What are the benefits for the US, et cetera? Like basically write like a policy memo though. I never learned how to write a, I don't think I ever really learned how to write a policy memo, but it's like, or like if I learned how to write a policy memo, it wasn't called a policy memo, but this is basically like attend this event, write the policy memo and write the policy memo at, your, my desk when I worked in Congress. I don't want to say this to dis dissuade anyone from working in Congress, but I'm pretty sure the computer I had was from like 1995 or something because it like was so incredibly slow and sometimes it wouldn't even work. Um, but then once you're done, if I think if I worked in Congress now, and I don't know if this is possible, I would probably take my laptop. But even if to just like, um, write stuff on my laptop so I wouldn't have to use this little computer and like email it to myself. But like, wow. And also the office is really loud, but you have to work in the office because um, like you're, you'll be like working on your briefing notes about like whatever, like let's say rare diseases or something. And then like people will come in and they will be chatting in the, in the office because they're getting ready to go and talk to their member of Congress. And it's not like you can say like, hey, can you please stop talking? I'm trying to write a memo about science. So you have to sort of like balance your love of like, um, balance your desire to work in silence with the fact that you're like doing a really cool, really important thing in the nation's capital and it's okay if it doesn't get done in the perfect most perfect of ways but like don't expect to be able to like do very in-depth reading on like i mean you may whatever you do has to be done incredibly quickly and but it will be used the, the the as a scientist your expertise is so valuable in congress that's the other thing it's like um and I was a legislative intern, so I focused on the the legislation that was happening. So like, um, so that's the work I did. So basically you just go to these meetings as a legislator. There's different things you can do. So you can have different internships. You can be a press intern and the press intern, all they do is like read clips. Clips are like media coverage that you get and you have to read them. And I learned why they do this later when I got into public relations is you read what everyone's saying about you in I guess like the local newspapers or like in the New York Times or whatever, so that you can use that to craft your, your messaging and then, um, or to see what's going on or to see what people are saying about you so that you just at least know what people are saying about you. You can, there's other types of interns. There's an intern that all they do is write back to constituents like about different things. And I forget what they're called, what that internship is called. Obviously the legislative intern keeps up with legislation. So that's why I was constantly going to different events, writing memos. I had so much fun working and going to different meetings because like nothing makes you feel more important than like literally going to like a memo on some, going to a briefing on something in Congress and being surrounded by people that really care about this topic. And then also feeling like, wow, as much as like people in, people yell at Congress for doing nothing. Sometimes like they really worked on issues that I really cared a lot about that I was like, well, no one's paying attention to this, but they actually were paying attention to it in Congress. And they needed people like me, people with a science background to kind of like, I don't want to say push things along, but I also do want to say push things along. Cause as a scientist, you don't do science to gain influence. You do it to help people. So um, it's great too. And it's, and the people that I worked with, they're like mostly college students, but there may be some graduate students as well. I'm not, I'm not sure, but they're like young people. That's not to say that you should be dissuaded from doing an internship as an older person, like as a graduate student, because it's fun to work with young people. There's really good energy. You have a, you, everyone in my office was really, there was really, it was just really good experience. Um, but as a person, but if you, but I really do encourage graduate students. Like if you have like a free summer, or you have like a free like three months or so, which you probably do not as a graduate student, unless you're a graduate student in Washington as I was before when I was in Georgetown, then I definitely recommend doing that. And there's also um, another thing you could do like when you're, if you're, so let's say you just got your master's or you just got your PhD and you're looking for a job and you will definitely need to have like some amount of like a slush fund saved up for this, but definitely consider applying to an internship in Congress because the skills you learn from it are so valuable. 
So I obviously one skill I learned is to be able to work every day in a very overwhelming place. And I was working in Congress at the beginning of the Trump administration. And one job that I had that was very tedious, or I'm not sure what the right word was, definitely a very important job that people were utilizing very much was people calling their member of Congress to complain about in our district, because it was a relatively progressive district to complain about Donald Trump. Some people called and said they liked Donald Trump, but for the most part, um, so like you, you talk to constituents, you can't, um, you don't like, because Congress is, they have to have like very strict media standards for standards for like what information flows in and out of Congress. You can't like one time someone called and was like, hey, do you know if Obamacare is going away? And I like did this analysis and I was like, well, I don't think Obamacare is going away because remember all the many different challenges that were happening? Like, I think they're going to get rid of the the thing where you have to pay a, some, it was like some amount of money so that you can opt out of it. Like, I think they're going to get rid of that. But I think Obamacare is here to stay because like they don't have the votes or something. And then, so I put down the phone. I was right, by the way. But then my supervisor immediately called me over and was like, did you know we're not supposed to do that? Because as a person answering the phones, you're not supposed to give out information like that because it is, because there's kind of like a gatekeeping mechanism set up. Because if you think about people that call Congress, sometimes journalists call Congress and they want to just like get some random like dirt on people. So they'll like pretend to be someone and be like, oh, I, I have some refugees that I need to get like transported. Can you please help me? Um, and then, but you can't do that. You can only just direct them to the proper person. Same with the media. Whenever the media called, we would have to direct them to our, pre our press person, our uh, communications director, because that was the person that did all the media requests or like coordinated them. As for the actual things that you do in the office, I was so anxious the whole time I was in that office. There's just like a lot happening. The days were like relatively packed. Like I would get there, I would make my first coffee one day. So... I'm from Oklahoma and I'm a huge Thunder fan. And Kevin Durant was leaving the Thunder. I think it was sometime in early 2017. And there was this whole thing about like cupcakes and people that liked people were making fun of cupcakes and dressing up as cupcakes in Oklahoma. And I was like, oh, this is giving me a cupcake craving. So I went and got this cupcake. Then I um so to get into the Capitol every day, you have to go through security and it's kind of like the airport. So I had this cupcake, I put this cupcake in a cup and then I brought it with me on the Metro, which you're not even supposed to have food on the Metro, which is Washington subway, but I just like took food there anyway. And then I, I just kind of hit it. Cause if you have your food bits in like a package, they're not gonna take your food away from you. They just don't want you eating on the Metro so you don't get crumbs everywhere. So I transported my cupcake. Then I transported my cupcake through security all with the goal of being able to have a cupcake for breakfast in the Capitol building complex. One of the buildings on the side, so you know how there's the Capitol Hill building and across the street from it is the Supreme Court. On one side of it are the Senate buildings and then on the other side are the House buildings. And I worked in the House, house building, I worked in Longworth actually, um, which to this day remains my favorite house building. Then I so make my coffee then I would usually have to like, so we'd have to organize the office before everyone came in. And then when people came in, um, I personally never knew it was happening that day. We had like our boss who was like much younger than me, by the way. Um, she was probably like 20 and I was like 35 or so by that point, 35. Yeah. Like 33 or so. So she would be like, Hey, Shiva, like, so there's a briefing on, um, I went to several briefings. I went to like many, many different cool briefings. One briefing I didn't get to go to, which I'm sad that I didn't get to go to to this day. And I don't think I, I think I didn't get it because I, I sort of like hesitated. It was about, so the member of the house that I worked for was on the finance committee and I really, and I, I'm a, I'm a finance nerd as well. And so my boss was like, Hey, do you want to go to this meeting on like debit cards? And I was like, yeah, but like, I don't know if I'll understand it or something. And so she was like, well, never mind." And so I didn't get to go to that one, but she would ask me like, Hey, can you go to this? But it would be like happening like right then. So like you go there, you sit there, you wait for people to give you instructions. And honestly, if you already have a master's in science, it can be really 
it can feel really weird, but it's also really cool because it's like, you know, in academia, it's structured differently because like there's people, they've been working in science forever. It's kind of the seniority also goes by age for the most part. But in Capitol Hill, everything's run by like 20 year olds. Like even Maxwell Frost himself is like 20. So his chief of staff might even be older than him. At me and the chief of staff of my office were the same age. So the chief of staff is the person that oversees everyone. And there's like a hierarchy where it's like interns. And then there's like there's the press people, there's the legislative people, which that has its own little hierarchy because there's people that do like single issues and then they report to people that cover like higher issues, like different overarching issues. And then that person, there's one legislative, or I guess they report to the chief of staff, there's like a structure. So so then once you go to, once you get assigned to the briefings, you can get assigned to go to briefings. If And I one day, like I was running like random errands, like one day I had to like get some flags because flags get flown in the Capitol. So like, you go pick up some flags, just take them from one building, you get the flags, then you go and take them to the place that flies the flags over the Capitol. So like, if you're like, you can request any person living in the US, I think you have to pay for this, but it's like, you can request for your member of Congress to fly some flags over the Capitol for you for like celebrating stuff. I'm trying to think of like some really cool stuff I did, but I can't really think of anything because it's like opening mail and mail in Congress is like a very different system due to just a bunch of stuff. It, it has its own system. And yes, you will have to learn how to work the printer, which it's like pretty easy. One thing I did that was like, so I wrote an article about it because it was like, kind of cr it was soul crushing. It was being able to print out binder, the little tabs, the paper tab thingies that like separate dividers on a binder. I didn't know how to do that. And then I also was telling, I was telling my boss, like, why don't, can we just write these? Like, I have really good handwriting. She was like, no, they have to be really professional. There's nothing more rewarding than like being the go-to person for science. You learn such valuable skills. I forgot where I was going with that. But you learn such valuable skills, communication. You learn how the government works. But yeah, the binders that you learn how to print. I never, I still to this day cannot get, I, I have never, I don't own a, I do own a printer, but I never use it. For some people, I think most people working in Congress that have been scientists, I think a lot of them will be shocked at how different it is. Because, like, think about what you do in science every day. So you call your boss by their first name. You're, I mean, even if your boss is famous, I mean, but it, the one thing that's the same is the staffers do the work. The, the member of Congress just, like, votes and stuff for the most part. I definitely recommend it, but... Um, the culture is definitely not the same as science. And oh, so saying the rest of my day. So then at lunchtime, I would take a break. I would actually leave. I used to leave to go on walks because I found Congress so stressful because it was just a bunch of people getting us, the interns that we just sat around. First of all, a lot of us answered the phones, but I was lucky. In a way, I was lucky that I got taken off the phones because then I could just like do like um, other stuff that mostly involved writing because they were like, oh, you're a writer. You want to go? or you're a scientist, you want to summarize this for us? The structure of the Congress is a lot, it's a lot less, um, you, you have to like, it's kind of fun. It's like working in a startup kind of, because it's like, when you go to a research lab, it's like all these people, they're like experts. They've been there forever. Like they have their lab, they do, you work on this tiny piece of thing. Every day, you know what you're gonna do. They don't come and bother, hopefully, they don't come and bother you every five seconds, be like, hey, our research plans just changed, can you do this? But when you go to Congress and work there, it's really exciting because you never know what's gonna happen that day. Um, you never know, you never, you never know what's gonna happen because it's so, it's so exciting. But it's, it's one of those places where no one's going to tell you what to do. You just have to do everything yourself. Have confidence in your abilities because I definitely had moments where I was like really doubting myself. You'll get like a lot of feedback if you're like me and you're a scientist. You might get a lot of feedback every day. Like I got so much feedback every day. Like, oh, did you know you're doing this wrong? I had no idea I was doing anything wrong. Like when I got taken off the phones or they would like call me over and be like, hey, I, I don't think you'd like... Um, but I, but I made it through two and a half months of it and eventually ran out of money. If you show up every day, you're professional, you're committed to doing a good job, you network. While I was there, I also interviewed for another job as a health health um, legislative assistant. And I didn't get it, but, but I did was looking for other jobs. The key is to network like crazy because every day, if you just do everything you're told and you maintain a professional demeanor and you apply your science knowledge and help the Congress, then... Um, your it builds your skills and then it helps the 
it helps the US be better, um, have more informed people. So at the end of the day, I was always really exhausted because I had just, and I'd always drink so much coffee. And so I'd, at, by around like five or so, we'd just be waiting to leave. So then I would just like wait for the clock to strike five and then just like hop in to get out, of, make another coffee for the road sometimes. I never slept when I worked in Congress. I woke up really early to use the gym in our, in the um, hotel so that I could have energy and stuff. So the thing about it that I think any scientist can work in Congress is that I made my internship my own experience. Like I'd, I knew I was going to walk around. I worked on the sixth floor of Longworth. So I didn't wear high heels every day because who wears high heels every day to run up and down six flights of stairs? And my boss told me, don't go to the elevators because that's where the media starts interviewing everyone. So I just avoided the elevators. I just ran up and down the stairs. And so I wore some sneakers, but I wore some like really stylish sneakers and I dressed them up really nicely so that I could be comfortable while also getting the job done. And no one cared. And I, and the second time I had an internship, I wore sneakers as well. And no one, and I, and I pointed them out and they were just like, oh, whatever. You can do things to make your internship your own, but just be prepared for long hours. I really wish more scientists got involved in working in Congress because there are no scientists in Congress. I don't, there's like a couple scientists. So I think that was my whole day. And then on the weekends, I just did stuff for myself. You could explore Washington DC on the weekends. I had already lived there for like seven years. So I just, I don't remember. What did I do on the weekends? I just did like things to recharge myself so that I wouldn't burn out from all the work I was doing because it was truly very hard like that those days were like very demanding they were demanding in a way that science is not because there it requires you to kind of use your social skills and your professional skills and um that's not to say that I didn't like I loved my coworkers. like it was really fun but I it was just a diff completely different skill set. Whereas science was based on like my hard skills and my ability to explain things, my ability to like do something like a technique in MRI. Working in Congress was like my hinged on my ability to just like things that we take for granted, like being able to sit quietly and act professionally in a presentation while um, people were talking. Like I don't know why that was like incredibly hard to me working for me working in Congress, whereas like I had no problem filing into like a se session at the Society for Neuroscience and just like chatting or I mean, not, not chatting, just like sitting there and like absorbing information. It was just like um, in science, I feel like the academic scene is more structured for like intellectual thought and knowledge, but it's not in a in a briefing. It's just it feels like pure chaos to work in the house because you're just sitting there. It's amazing, but you're like you know, I know that I knew that like, I was kind of just like doing this thing, which I felt was really crazy, but it was like really important. And I think the skill that I learned the most from that experience is just being able to like do things on the fly with like no previous anything and just like get it done. The most important thing was to like get things done, get them done a certain way, get them done well. And that's what really gets was valued in Congress is just like being able to get things done because there's so much stuff happening. So I don't know how much more I can say about that, but I, I hope that I've at least answered some people's questions that are scientists questions about like what it's like working in Capitol Hill, if only to just like maybe help you understand what skills are valued in Capitol Hill. I only worked there for two and a half months, so I'm not like super super skilled on like what is really like happening there like what like how to work the system how to work your way up I do want to work in Capitol Hill again someday like I don't know how that's gonna be possible either as as in some kind of like adjacent to Capitol Hill or like I would love to be like a communications person but the hours are really long but it's like that's kind of like science but um and I wonder like if there's other people that have that are scientists that have worked on Capitol Hill. Most scientists do the AAAS policy fellowship. That's the congress there's a congressional one that picks like two people every year and it's super competitive. So I wonder it's really it is really hard to get a job in Congress, but it's also not that hard if you play the long game and apply over time. And if you really want to work in Congress, I think you can find a way to make it happen. And I hope that if you're a scientist, you do find a way to and you're interested in working in Congress, you do find a way to work in Congress or elect a pro-Congress member of the pro-Congress, pro-science member of Congress or a pro-science president.
because that also is really important. So thanks for listening. Make sure to follow Fancy Comment and click the bell so you won't miss our future posts kind of at the intersection of policy, science, writing, education, marketing, using science to solve hard problems, because that's what Fancy Comet is about, is about using our skills as scientists to do big things in the world. That starts with, um, first of all, knowing what the challenges are, but also with like knowing how to use your science knowledge for good. In some ways, I kind of just did my internship as an afterthought and it was not as structured as like my career in science which was incredibly structured but I'm learning that very few things in life are truly as structured as like scientific research and I've met many people that that have just said that doing science is like doing something every day and not really realizing what it is so maybe all of life is like that if you have any questions feel free to chime in in the comments I'll have happy to do more videos on this topic um, Make sure to check out the Fancy Comma resources and I'll catch you later.